Chapter 281 and Easy Capture You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Are you sure? Anna asked Severus as she felt her blood pump from excitement over the news that Sebastian had brought her. I'm sure, Severus affirmed as Anna rushed towards Max's office quarters. Nobody had seen the captain over the last twenty days and everyone had begun wondering what could be the reason behind this. With Max not keen on revealing his use of the shamanic arts to his faction, the matters of him using the death plague spell were kept strictly confidential. Captain, it's me, I'm entering, the Siva said as she entered Max's office and immediately was attacked by a strong foul-smelling stench. Max's office which was once neat and tidy was now covered all around in empty mana and stamina potion bottles as it looked like fifteen bachelors had a drinking party here last night with potions instead of alcohol. Max on the other hand looked like he was ready for action as he said, they're leaving the fort, raise the alarm, tell Severus to pick the best garrisons, I need five thousand men on the march in thirty minutes. Today we capture the northern fortress, Max's eyes shone with an almost inhuman excitement as despite looking like a sewage treatment worker, Max did not lose any of his enthusiasm. I, I'll relay your orders, if you have two minutes please clean up, you surely don't want to make your first public appearance in twenty days looking and smelling like this, the Saiba said as she quickly walked out of the office and ran to relay his orders. Today was marching day and if everything worked out well, it would be a historic day as the vampires gained their first bit of land in over many decades. Severus had told the group that he could hear marching footsteps which were headed away from the fort when he put his ear down to the earth, however Asiva was not sure of Severus's long-distance hearing ability. Now that Max had confirmed the same, it really meant that the barbarians had been forced to abandon the fort, in which case today would be an easy victory for the vampire troops. The marching orders were given to the troops and the garrisons were organized quickly as within 30 minutes 5,000 troops were ready in full body armor to march straight into enemy territory. A clean Max made his appearance on one of his nether beasts as he looked at the crowd and said, some of you may be wondering, where the fuck was the captain the last few days? Well, if you want to find out then make sure you don't fall behind as we are seriously hard pressed on time if we want to catch those cocksucking barbarians before they can run with their tails between their legs. Nobody slacks for the next 12 hours. Today we make history. Cheers screams whistles the excitement amongst the troops was high as Max rode on the abandoned road that once connected Fort Sven to the northern fort when it was still under the vampire control as 5,000 soldiers rode behind him. The abandoned road was not in the best of conditions as it used to be, but it was still navigable enough that it was only a 2.3 hours ride till the northern fortress. Max was sure that he was going to be able to take control of the fort today without a fight, as the only matter that concerned him was to kill the 2,000 barbarians who had chosen to run away from the area with their chieftain Maki before they reached the southern fortress. The death plaque had been extremely successful in whittling down the enemy numbers from 12,000 strong to just over 2,000. Max had killed 10,000 troops in a span of 20 days and gained 25 levels total as a result of his endeavor. By the end, Max was able to make sense of the vision of a rat and it was with that vision that he realized that Maki was planning to run away today which prompted Max to act in a hurry and try to see if he could catch him mid-journey. Hence, Max cancelled the death plaque spell after days of operating it and the rat summoned by him finally turned back to dust. Putting the bone staff down for the sword, Max began riding hard alongside his men and all his wildest dreams came true when 2.5 hours later he stormed into the northern fort's front gates with nothing but a handful of barbarians guarding it who were taken out within minutes by his troops. Deafening cheers erupted from the troops when they realized that they had seized a fortress without a fight, however, Max was not content. Kill everyone who is sick and defenseless in the infirmary and inside the houses, burn the food supplies and the barbarian flag from over this fort and unflur our colors. Leave 1,000 men to man the fort, the rest will continue charging with me into the Anaka Valley, Today's campaign ends with the head of the barbarian chief Maki hanging from the front door of this fort, Max ordered as the cheers died down considerably. The captain had relayed the orders and the troops quickly began reorganizing themselves to best suit the command. 
Not even 15 minutes after seizing control of the fort, Max was back outside with 4,000 men at his tail riding at full speed towards the southern fort trail, trying to catch Maki and his men before they make it to safety. Max's end goal was not just controlling the northern fort, but was to control both the north and south fortresses. Should Maki and his strong men reach the south's asylum, it would be 2,000 men more that he would need to deal with when he came for the southern fort and it would be much more difficult than catching them out in the open fields today when he outnumbered them 2.1. Hence acting decisively, Max continued the hunt. Chapter 282 A Fight in the Open Fields You are listening at NovelFull.audio I can't do it, Furio, I can't look these people in the eye when they wave at me, Maki said as he rode his horse slowly through the Anaka Valley. After 60 years of being chieftain, Maki was forced to make the tough call of abandoning his sick troops and leaving the fort with the healthy men. It was a decision that was sure to sully his name as a great warrior, however, he was sure that nothing but a painful death awaited him and his men should they not have left. Had he been riding at a normal speed, the distance between his fort and the southern fort was only about two hours on a mount, however, with morale being low, Maki only rode a trotting speed which would take him four hours to reach the fort. Maki rode through the heart of the Anaka Valley, where every farmland he passed he was greeted with the warm smiles and respect of the locals, but the warm smiles made Maki's heart sting with guilt as he could not look back and greet them with the same enthusiasm. Although Maki had abandoned his fortress today, he did not expect it to fall into enemy hands any time soon. He expected the enemy to be needing 2.3 days to figure out that there was a change in patrol pattern on the other side, and then adopt a cautious approach as to scaling an attack and testing the waters, by which time he could be on standby with the southern troops and ready to intercept any incoming regiment before they could ever reach the slopes of the northern fort. Hence when he heard shouts of, incoming, when he was still about 50 minutes away from the southern fort, Maki was completely caught off dot guard. Incoming. There are vampires on our tail, turn around, face the back, we have vampires on our tail, shouts like these prompted Maki to turn around, as he was horrified to see an army of at least 4,000 riders coming towards his unit at full speed. How the fuck? Maki wondered as he grit his teeth and dismounted from his mount as he pulled his massive sword out. Draw your weapons, prepare to fight. Maki shouted as he started making his way towards the front lines where the fighting would hit the hardest. Prepare for battle, don't give them an inch, barbarians on the ready, the barbarians quickly reformed themselves into a tight shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder formation for the entire length of the road and became prepared to fight. By the time Max was only 50 meters away from the barbarian unit, Maki had already made his way to the front lines as he stood there waiting for Max as a mountain of a man with no fear of death in his eyes. Banging his own chest with his fists, Maki shouted, Bring it, you vampire bloodsuckers, come fight US if you dare. It was supposed to be an intimidating scene of a giant man taunting his enemies into charging headfirst, however, Max thought nothing of it. Max used, fire compression, as he increased the strength of, dragon's breath, to the extreme to the point that it became powerful enough to rival a tier 4 spell as Max stood in front of the barbarian frontline alone and said, okay, here take it, dragon's breath, a devastating dragon's breath was unleashed by Max that was like one unleashed by a dragon itself, covering the width of the entire frontline and incinerating the weaker troops around Maki who could not tolerate the heat of the attack. Cheers erupted from Max's underlings as the moment the attack ended, Max's hounds pounced onto the burnt enemy lines with vigor as Max himself threw himself at Maki with the rest of his army following suit as they charged straight into barbarian lines. You are messing with the wrong opponent, Maki said as he clutched his two-handed sword with both hands and brought down an overhead slash towards Max with full power. Block Max blocked his attack using Kremeth's teachings but the attack strength still created a crater underneath his footing from the distribution of energy. Max's block greatly shocked Maki as it was supposed to flatten a weak individual like Max easily. Energy Blast Max used an energy blast at Maki's chest and caused a small amount of damage as Maki was forced to reel back two steps. You are a mage. Maki wondered as he could not figure out what exactly was Max with his sword and his mage-type attacks. Fireblast, 
Fire Blast, Fire Blast, Max used three Fire Blasts back to back and while Maki blocked the first two from the swing of his swords, the heavy weapon was not agile enough to block the third one as well as it hit him again square at the chest. I'm your worst nightmare, Max said as he came extremely close to Maki's face by the time Maki recovered from the Fire Blast damage. Max used, fake out, as he swung for Maki's head promoting Maki to bend his knees and dodge the strike, but the moment he did that, Max's sword in his hand turned to a cloud of dust as his leg which looked like a piece of flesh turned into a sword as Maki could do nothing but stare at it in horror. Nine Azura Sword Slice Nine deep cuts left Maki's face in shambles and his nose completely cut dot off from his face as the giant warrior howled in pain from the disfiguration. For the first time in his life, he was facing such an efficient and an interesting opponent who gave him not a single moment of respite and it was both a rewarding and frustrating feeling for Maki. Dot he was not afraid of death, and he was not afraid of Max although his HP bar was at a low 25% of its maximum after all the fighting. The only thing he was afraid of was the consequence of his death for his troops, as morale would plunge and his troops would be wiped out much faster. At this instance, he knew this was a losing fight and that he and his party were most likely doomed. But Maki's only desire in these last moments was to stand out and face the vampires till the end, or at least be the last one to die from his entire division to show his men that he was there for them till the very end. And for that desire, Maki was ready to do his very best. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Bonus chapter for hitting the PS target, good job everyone forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 283 Victory You are listening at novelfull.audio. I'll be damned if I fall to ants like you, Maki said as he clutched his sword tightly with both his hands and let Max's, fire blast, hit him squarely in the chest without trying to dodge the attack. You are strong, small vampire, I'll give you that. But are you strong enough to block this attack? Maki said as mana erupted from his body, giving Max a feeling of immediate danger. Max backed off a little, giving respect to his enemy's conviction as he prepared himself for any attack that might come his way. Watch me men. Your chieftain still stands strong. Maki roared as he unleashed his strongest attack. Camelback Breaker, Maki plunged his sword straight into the earth and caused the entire ground around him to start vibrating violently. A mini earthquake was created in the battlefield as many lost their footing to the vibrating earth as Max frighteningly looked towards the Anaku volcano checking if it showed signs of exploding. Maki had used a very dangerous move, on the base of a very dangerous place and Max felt like a fool for allowing his enemy to complete his attack. Clutching his sword, Max took one big leap towards Maki, and used, sword intent, coupled with, overhead slash, to claim the barbarian's head for once and for all. Point thirty four zero zero zero. Maki saw Max charging towards him, however, till the end he never flinched away from the attack and let Max take his head with honor. In his last act, he had created a chance for his warriors to kill one or two vampire opponents who had lost their footing and although he had other moves in his arsenal using which he could have injured Max in a one versus one fight, he chose to go out using an AoE attack instead. In an arduous battle that lasted 45 minutes, the 2000 barbarians en route to the southern fortress were wiped out by Max and crew after suffering a loss of 540 men with 160 more injured. It was by no means a victory that came with no costs, but it was an important victory nonetheless as Max understood full well the consequences of letting Maki make it to the southern fortress and join the forces there. Hence, despite the heavy losses on the part of the vampires Max rode back with a satisfied heart knowing that he did what had to be done. His enemies were undoubtedly a breed of extremely dangerous opponents who fought fiercely even when having lost an arm and a leg, however, they still bled like mortals and could be killed with proper fighting techniques. Max did not linger one moment longer than necessary at the Anaka Valley region as he was sure that the locals would report their escapade to the southern fort troops and that reinforcements would be there within minutes. Max did not wish for another confrontation now that his troops were tired after half a day's riding and a big fight, as he preferred to calmly retreat to the northern fort and be happy with the gained lands for the day instead. 
Max and his men got a heroic welcome back at the northern fort as Max savagely hung Maki's head on the fort's main door to serve as a reminder to the barbarians that this fort was under the vampires now. The wounded were tended to, while mourning was observed for the dead. Max felt a little sad about the lives lost under his command, but he was not overly worried about it either because he knew that expecting to come out of all fights with a 100% survival rate was impossible. This was war, and lives were lost in war. His job was to minimize the losses and keep them within acceptable limits and he had managed to do that much. Anything else was regrettable, but nothing that would make him lose sleep. Till his friends were okay, Max did not really care about the life of every individual soldier under his command like it was an integral part of his own life. Inside the South Fort, for decades we have not lost a single inch of land to the vampires yet today we see our brother Maki and his clan fall at the hands of the vampires. Shame, Mazda the chieftain of the South Fort said as he slammed his foot on the floor in anger. Shame on Maki for abandoning his fort, he is a disgusting stain in the name of chieftain, to abandon his sickly subjects and seek asylum with us. He was not strong enough to be called a barbarian. A sniveling bitch he was, Mazda said as he downed a huge portion of mead and let the alcohol fuel his rage. Captain Raven, well well well, what an interesting guy. The first individual to break the deadlock and gain kilometers worth of land for the vampires. How interesting. BDNV I'm sure he would be a hero within his kind now, Mazda said as he chuckled while swirling the mead in his wooden glass. How much I wish that the idiot attacks MY Fortress next and does it before Erasmus becomes a god and leaves this planet so that I can become his successor instead of the idiots on the backlands. For all these years I've been the one to keep the barbarian land safe from the vampires. I've been at the very edge of the barbarian lands and have served my race well. Yet when the time comes for Erasmus to name a successor I'm only fourth on his potential list of candidates. Of course I'm fourth, I've never been involved in politics, I've never been to social gatherings. I've been deployed at the edge where I ensure the safety of my clan and my race every day, every night. Hence I say attack me, attack me great hero Raven, for only thwarting your attack can bring me merit. Merit that I desperately need in these critical times. Mazda said as he bared his innermost feelings. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This bonus chapter is sponsored by patron Alcat underscore gaming, please thank him in the comments for this one forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 284 Reactions You are listening at novel full dot audio. General Zest, Captain Raven has gained about 50 km carat 2 land and a fort on planet Maralego. He has broken the age dot old deadlock. A Titus clan soldier reported to Zest who read the report with a big smile on his face. This boy, he has something special inside him. He has that fire inside him that I've lost with my mana circuit. Make sure he gets the maximum merit points for his achievements. I don't need a single merit point for recommending him to that post. Just give everything to him. Zest said as he took pride in Max's achievements. Meanwhile Major Ratty, I told you, these small planets are useless for someone like Raven. That boy was destined for tough battlefields like Maralego. I remember that day like it was yesterday that Raven came into my office distressed wanting advice if he should go to Maralego or if it's career suicide and I told him that go. There is no greater honor than serving the Titus clan at the front lines. Now see, today because of my guidance the boy is a rising star. Raddy flexed at a civilian banquet where he was the chief guest of honor. Meanwhile, at Xander, the capital planet of the Titus clan, Raven you say. Hmm, good kid, impressive military background, if he continues to shine like he does at the moment he will become a one-star general someday, a two-star general at the upper echelons of the military hierarchy said as he assessed Max's current achievements. Should we promote him to major? A bureaucrat asked the general, however the god just shook his head and refused the idea. He is only tier 3 at the moment is what I understand. He needs to be at least tier 4 to be declared a major. Even though his combat ability may surpass his tier, 
his promotion can only be handed out to him when he has the qualifications to support it. That or he wins us enough land that nobody can question his contributions to be awarded promotion. 50 km square is good, but not enough. The tier 6 two-star general said as he placed the report aside. Meanwhile the vampire population, newspaper headlines. Decades-old deadlock in Maralego broken by Titus clan rising, star. Read here his genius strategy to conquer enemy lands when everyone else failed, wow, this raven kid is something else, he broke the deadlock at Maralego. A netizen reading the paper commented. The new generation is making waves, the Titus clan sure are lucky to find this good seed. Bah, it's just a small achievement, I could have done it with my eyes closed, don't know what the fuss is all about. What is the background of this raven kid? It says he was a garrison commander not long ago, just how did he become captain so fast? Serves those barbarians right. Maralego is ours you savage cunts. Meanwhile Marcus Aurelius, N.O. No. Motherfucker. You cocksucking bastard. How dare you. How dare you. No. Marcus completely lost his mind upon reading about Max's success as even in his exile he could not tolerate the success of his foe. Meanwhile Regus Aurelius, my king, he is the kid responsible for derailing Marcus. Should we let the matter slide or should we finish him as you instructed? Marcus's ex-security asked Regus as he had just received orders from the monarch to kill the man responsible for derailing Marcus's growth under the blanket. He's too popular at the moment, his death will raise questions from the Titus clan. Let him be for the time being, we will kill him when his hype dies, Regus said as he dismissed the matter for the time being, realizing that it was not the best opportunity to kill Max. Meanwhile Max, Max's name was spreading like a wildfire amongst the vampire community post his victory. Thousands of congratulatory letters and love confessions reached the northern fort as everyone wanted to get to know the hero who broke the age. Old Deadlock Better Max himself did not consider this achievement something to write home about as his job at the planet had only but started. However, he had hoped that after his achievements he would be either promoted or allotted more troops, both of which did not happen. For some reason, Max was never allocated extra troops to man the new territory he had conquered and had to thin out his existing forces between Fort Sven and the Northern Fortress. This arrangement made it so that Max had little to no mobile forces left for day-to-day -day -day operations or future war efforts as his future ambitions seemed to fall flat. While the Vampire Kingdom hailed him as a hero and a rising star, his own immediate higher-ups did not approve of his application for sending 10,000 additional troops under his command from other areas that did not need them. It was now that Max finally felt the effects of clashing with Marcus as although he had came out of the confrontation and scathed he had definitely lost favor of the higher-ups for hurting the Vampire King's son and now he was left to bleed out without support. Under these circumstances Max's ambition of conquering the southern fort seemed like nothing but a pipe dream as it would be impossible for him to take it down with the meager forces he had left at his own disposal after the death of about 600 men and the new duties entrusted to him for controlling the northern fortress. It was like Max's military career had been put under an invisible boundary which would not allow Max to spread his wings anymore, however, despite the adversity Max was not ready to give up on his dream. Max knew he needed to win the southern fortress and gain merit under his name, now that the higher-ups had shown their true face against him, the best way to slap them down was to win the fort and then publish an article in the newspapers about how he did it despite having no internal support in the military. Chapter 285 Perspective You are listening at NovelFull.audio Max woke up on a small bed with a naked Asiva in his arms. For a moment it seemed like all the problems in his life had disappeared with her sleeping so peacefully in his arms, but then he was reminded about the reality of the situation. He was in the northern fortress of Maralego and all his pleas to secure more troops to take down the southern fort had been rejected. It was either the internal politics within the clans that stopped Max from getting more support because the Titus clan would get all the glory should Max win it for them while the others got nothing, or it was the fallout from Max giving Marcus the whopping. 
Either way, Max was screwed with only about 1,500 troops at his disposal to take down the southern fort and its massive army of 18,000 strong. All his victory celebrations had been dampened when he got all the congratulatory letters in the world alongside a couple of rejection letters that stated that his requests could not be serviced due to shortage of capable troops. Which was basically the higher-up's way of telling Max to go fuck himself. BVEC Max was in a terrible mood over all this when Asiva showed up to his room and spent the night over, as being in her warm embrace calmed Max down enough to give him more perspective into the situation. It was make or break time for Max now, his plans for the future did not see him spend years of his life as a military man in service of the Titus clan. Max was either going to make it big and become a lord within the vampire ranks soon, or he was going to go outside the system and use his brother's contacts to become a vampire lord through sheer force. He had the backing of the elites, his sister-in-law, the elves, the one knights and Kremeth. He had enough money to hire a huge mercenary army to take down the Kingsman clan territory should he be hellbent on doing it and although that would make him the enemy of the vampire state as a whole, Max was not worried about being defenseless. It would spell out a more dangerous route for him to become vampire king should he walk outside the system as the entire vampire clan would become his enemy. But he did not mind doing it should he have no options. You look sexy when you're seriously brooding, Asiva said as she smiled kindly resting on Max's chest watching his expressions change as he thought about the future. You look beautiful no matter what time of the day it is, Max said as he kissed Asiva on the lips. So what's on your mind today? Asiva asked Max knowing full well what exactly was Wei.ing on his mind. Well, I'm planning to fuck it all and go for a YOLO operation on the southern fort. Sebastian will be our backup, in case everything goes south he will bail us out with his teleportation technique. But I just want to say fuck the odds and just charge into that fort. If we win, we win if we lose we lose. Max said as he transparently spoke exactly what he felt like a Siva chuckled, she knew the urge to go YOLO all too well but this was real life and not a video game, they could not go YOLO with the lives of so many soldiers under them at stake. Well you do have the dragon princess to count on don't you? Didn't you say she's stronger than even you now? You can call her for help. Asiva suggested as she wondered if Max could call on Mira for help in these tough times. Max grit his teeth at the mention of Mira, that kid was growing faster than a bamboo shoot having already surpassed Max in terms of levels. Although dragons aged differently from humans, in Max's mind Mira was still a three-year-old baby and he absolutely did not want to call on her aid if he could help it. That aside, Mira was going to be a big help if Max did call on her and he realized it too. Her infinite mana with her ability to fly and breathe strong fire was enough to trouble any fortress defenses. As Max began to think about it more and more, he began realizing that if he took the aerial approach there was a lot of ways he could cause major problems for the enemy troops. Gears in Max's mind began turning at full speed at this suggestion as Max felt his blood pumping at the thought of a potential aerial attack into enemy territory. The only problem was, that he was the only fighter who could potentially survive such a fiery showdown that he was imagining. Meanwhile Erasmus, sent ten tier 4 warriors to the southern fort, create an executive order to reinforce that place. Should the southern fort fall, it would open three new fronts of action for the vampires and it would be chaos for all barbarian clans should that happen. We have already lost the northern fort, if the south falls too then we would only have flat lands between the vampires and our central towns, there would be no stopping their march and there will be unnecessary bloodshed. I don't care what that kid Mazda thinks, his territory is way too important to be treated with such negligence. Erasmus ordered as he understood that irrespective of Mazda's personal feelings of wanting to secure the fort with his own might, Erasmus had to reinforce that place with his best warriors not because he did not trust Mazda, but because the consequences of failure were too catastrophic to even think about. I'm getting too old for this, I should be promoted to God.Hood in the next 2.3 months, let me retire from this planet with dignity. I beg you all. Erasmus said as he concluded the council meeting with all chieftains. 
forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This bonus chapter is sponsored by Patron Zippo 2019. Please thank him in the comments for this one. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 286 Crazy Plan You are listening at novelfull.audio. No. 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 End of discussion, Sebastian said panting as he strongly disagreed with Max's proposed plan of suicide attack. But why not? Come on buddy, it'll be just a quick stroll. In and out, just me and you, Max said, trying to convince Sebastian that his plan was worth trying. Why not? Why not? Why? Because it's what we have been taught. The very foundation of your crazy plan goes against the way of the coward and I'm having none of it. I'm a cowardly man, such craziness is beyond me. Sebastian refuted as Max had to throw his hands up in defeat to let his friend cool off. Max wanted to do a sort of solo run on the southern fortresses and take out its key infrastructure components in a strategic attack before making a run for it when the situation became out of control. However, for his plan to succeed he needed Sebastian to make sure that there was someone there to bail him out when things turned sour, but his best friend wanted none of his crazy war action. Just listen to me okay. Just one time hear me out. We have three dragons and three dragon riders. Even if we don't call on Mira for help you, Anna and Asaiva have dragons that are untouchable in the skies. You can hover over their forts, assured that their tiny arrows cannot pierce through the skin of your pets and then let your pets breathe down fire on the fort destroying the archer stations on the edge of the fort and creating an opening for me to barge through their walls with giants and land straight in the middle of all the fire and start manipulating fire to create more chaos. We destroy their psyche, we destroy major portions of their fort and we destroy their ability to guard their fort against enemy aggression by making big holes in the border walls. We do all this, and still come out and have a drink about it at night if you bail me out from within the fort when the time comes for us to run. These fuckers in the army above us have fucked us Sebastian, and now more than ever I need my friend's support to pull something crazy off. I can envision it, the stories about the brave dwarf that will become the favorite bed. Time story of millions of vampire children as their mothers tell them about his valor every day before bed. The dwarf that jumped into a flaming fort of barbarians with nothing but his wits and rescued his captain from that hellhole using his teleportation technique. The mighty dwarf Sebastian. Max said as his eyes shone with a fervent passion as he tried to stroke Sebastian's ego to get him to agree to his plan. It partially worked as Sebastian became speechless and blushed at the thought of his name becoming a bed. Time story of heroism for kids, but his bubble was all but burst when he asked Max the next question. So what did Asaiva say when you told her your plan? Sebastian asked Max, who started brushing against his hair and avoiding eye contact as he said, See, Sebastian, you are a free bird. You are not bound to any woman and can do as you please. Me. I'm shackled. If I propose these crazy plans then it would lead to me having a fight in the bedroom, but you on the other hand have to fear no one. You are Sebastian the Mighty, women you sleep with feel blessed just to be in your mighty presence. You should propose this plan to Asaiva and Anna and tell them as if it's your own plan. You know what? I give this plan to you, from today onwards all the credit of this plan belongs to you. Well done my master strategist, what a plan you came up with, Max said as he patted Sebastian on the back for a plan well thought but Sebastian immediately called Max out for his trickery. What? I had no part in this crazy planning, it was all you. How far have the cowards fallen? For you to fear your own bitch. Despicable. Just give her a tight slap and assert yourself as the man in the relationship. Just. Sebastian said as at that moment the door to Max's office opened and Anna and Asaiva entered the room. Slap who? Asaiva asked as she only heard those two words and did not understand the context behind the conversation. Sebastian was mortified, his breathing became erratic and his eyes looked like they were ready to pop out of them sockets as he imagined just what would happen to him if Asaiva were to hear a fraction of his conversation from moments ago. Nothing, just Sebastian was telling me the 
Max said playfully as he saw the opportunity to blackmail Sebastian into doing his bidding. Telling him that, I have an idea about how to conquer the southern fortress, Sebastian said, cutting Max off as he began sweating profusely from the fear of facing Asiva's wrath. Sebastian was pretty much as cowardly as they were made when it came to confronting fiery women like Asiva. In a split second he made the decision that it was better for him to take a fall into Max's suicidal plan and take the blame for thinking the crazy plan than letting Asiva know that he was instigating Max to treat her like a bitch and slap her around, because he was pretty sure that while there was a small percentage of chance that he came out alive from dropping into the heart of the enemy fortress, there was absolutely no scenario where he came out with both his balls intact should Asiva hear. The misogynistic talk that Sebastian spoke a few moments ago. Sebastian could imagine two painful daggers being plunged into his balls as Asiva stared into his eyes with a murderous glare, and he knew that it would be a thousand times more merciful to have his heart pierced by the enemy than have Asiva torture his manhood. Asiva had walked into the room at the worst moment possible and now Sebastian had no choice but to dance to Max's tunes just like he wanted him to, taking the full fall for the ridiculous plan Max cooked up. This is crazy. This plan sounds like it was made up after you were 15 beers into the night, Anna said as she disapproved of Sebastian's idea. I don't know about your dragons, but mine struggles to carry just my own weight, I'm not sure it can do aerial acrobatics like you want it to and destroy forts while carrying me on its back. Sebastian, I expected better from you. I thought you were a thorough planner, guess I was wrong. Asiva said as she shot down Sebastian's plan too as Sebastian silently gave Max the murderous glare for putting him through all this. Max gulped and understood that this was the moment where he had to come to Sebastian's support as he said, I personally think it's doable, but we need to work out the fine details. Sebastian is a genius strategist, although his plans sound crazy they later turn out to be very well thought out. You got to trust me on this. In all my time with him inside the dungeon his plans have never let us down, no matter how ridiculous they sounded, Max's support for Sebastian earned him a scoff from the girls who thought it was yet another moment of Max pampering Sebastian's ego as the group broke into chaos trying to argue what all could go wrong at every step of the plan proposed by Sebastian. The discussion which was basically a rapid fire of everything that could go wrong, helped Max reforge the plan in a way that all the concerns could be addressed and the risks could be minimized, as after an hour of serious discussing, what started as a ridiculous sounding plan started to take a form that sounded difficult and dangerous but definitely something that could be pulled off. The plan would undoubtedly need a lot of planning and skill to be executed perfectly but it was within the realm of possibility, which was all that mattered to Max. It's very dangerous, but if Max can ask Mira for help and Sebastian can bail him out before the heat becomes unbearable then it's doable. But it all comes down to Max's ability to fend off multiple opponents at once and Sebastian's ability to bail the two of you out. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Sebastian's plan seems doable all things considered, good job Seb, Anna said as she clapped in appreciation of Sebastian who nodded at the appreciation. Max looked like he wanted some credit now as he opened his arms wide and looked at Sebastian with a cheeky smile, but the dwarf only gave the man a death glare and shut him down as while the others might be fooled that it was Sebastian's idea, the two of them knew exactly what went down and who was to blame for all this. Max chuckled but let the matter slide as he pulled his friend in for a hug. Within this plan, the only person who was genuinely risking his life was Max himself, which was why Max was okay with constructing such a crazy plan as it was his own life on the line in the end. Max had backed himself to create a miracle and strike a big blow to the enemy but he still needed his friends to play a part in helping him pull that miracle off. Chapter 287 Mira vs Asiva You are listening at NovelFull.audio So this is your sexual mate. Mira asked Max as the atmosphere in the room got extremely tense. Max had called on Mira for help after months of not seeing each other and had introduced her to the group. Max was hesitant about approaching Mira for help on the mission in the first place, but Asiva insisted that he needed to bring the Dragon Princess in for maximum chances of success, hence Max did just that however, the meeting between Mira and Asiva did not go as Max hoped it would. Mira had grown a lot and was now a young dragon on the cusp of breaking through to Tier 4. 
Once she became a tier 4 dragon she would inherently learn the skill, human form, and would have a human transformation. At the moment she was incapable of transformation into a human, however, even in her dragon form it was clear that she was possessive about Max and not at all happy that he had a girlfriend in Asaiva. Asaiva who had never met Mira and only heard stories about the dragon kid believed that she would be an adorable youngling like Max made her to be in his stories, but she was not. She was a direct challenge to Asaiva's position as sole female vying for Max's attention. I'm not his sexual mate, I'm his girlfriend and future wife, Asaiva said, replying coldly to Myra's question about her status in Max's life. Her melons are small, are you sure she is the best candidate to bear your children? Mira asked Max, unperturbed by the dirty glare that Asaiva threw her way as Sebastian almost choked on his own saliva when he heard Myra's comment on Asaiva's boobs. We are here for a mission so let's focus on that guys, let's not worry about stuff for the distant future, Anna said, tactically taking Asaiva's side against the outsider. Max was quick to agree to Anna's words as he said, Anna's right, let's focus on the mission at hand, we leave in three hours when the night is at its darkest. We will have an advantage in the shade of the night, as although there will be patrol parties outside the fort, I'm pretty sure they won't be looking for flying predators in the sky. Yes, yes, since it's my plan in the first place, I approve of leaving when the night is at its darkest, Sebastian said in support of Max as he tried to steer the conversation away from Myra's thorny comments. A temporary peace was made between Asaiva and Mira and although the two did not talk to each other before the mission, they had multiple stare-downs as neither was willing to back off from their intentions of claiming Max for themselves. In Max's eyes, Mira was still the small kid he hatched out of Rhea's dragon egg himself, however, he never realized that Mira was now an adolescent dragon equivalent to a 16-year-old human girl already in her childish infatuation with Max had blown over to full adult obsession as she did not approve of any other female companionship for her man. Mira had been extremely happy that Max had called on her for help in his hard times and was doing good for himself outside the dungeon as she shared her life stories with him as well about her life at the royal palace and how she was being groomed to become the next dragon monarch. Apparently Rhea who had slipped to tier 6 strength after childbirth has recovered her strength back to tier 7 levels and was personally overseeing Myra's training, while her father the king who was the tier 8 powerhouse occasionally gave pointers to Mira on hunting and governance as he supplemented her training with rare elixirs and nutrient-rich foods to ensure that she grew up to be strong and healthy. From a third person's perspective Myra's life was perfect, however, she was amidst a lot of political and social turmoil as she had to constantly deal with plots and politics that would make her lose favor with her father or discredit her genius battle acumen. Helping Max was a wanted break from her hectic life, however, her good mood was ruined when she realized that Max had taken a sexual partner in the time the two of them were separated. In Myra's mind she had already accepted Max as her future husband and king as not only did he literally share half her soul, but ever since she was a young kid he was her crush. It's time Mira, are you ready? Max asked Mira as it was time to finally fly towards the southern fort and bring the fight to the barbarians there. ENV, I was born ready, Mira replied as she signaled for Max to hop onto her back and be prepared for takeoff. For dragons hence took off from the northern fort in the darkness of the night as Max, Sebastian, Anna and Asaiva flew on their respective pet dragons towards the southern fort. The group flew at a high altitude of 2,500 feet above ground level and could see the burning campfires in the southern fort even from a very far distance. Just as Max anticipated the group flew over many small barbarian parties and sentries who were posted outside the fort on patrol duty to make sure that no army could sneak near the fort in the cover of the night, however, none of them bothered to look above their heads and towards the sky as they missed the movement from a small party of four completely. As the four of them hovered above the fort, Max used his superior night vision to get a quick scan of the fort and its security forces before giving the dragons the signal to start the reign of fire. Upon Max's signal, Mira swooped down from the sky and towards the outer wall line of the southern fort which was preliminarily occupied by archers on night duty as she unleashed a devastating, dragon's breath, attack throughout the outer boundary, killing nearly 500 barbarians posted on duty on the wall as the alarm bells suddenly started ringing inside the fort about a potential sneak attack. 
By the time the troops heard the alarm and started to come out to see what exactly was going on, for dragons had started to lay into the southern fort from different directions as they breathed fire onto the fort grounds, burning multiple barbarians in the process. Chapter 288 The Battle at Southern Fort You are listening at NovelFull.audio Mazda was sleeping soundly with three beast. Women when he heard the alarm go off in the fort. Within a second Mazda was off his bed and starting to gear up as he rushed outside the room to have a look at the situation. Mazda was pissed off at Erasmus for his decision to send ten tier four fighters to the southern fort. However, only twelve hours after their arrival at the fort there was already an ambush attack by the enemy, proving Erasmus's decision to send backup to be wise. Mazda was shook when he saw that the enemy was riding dragons as mounts as they unleashed dragon breath onto the fort, as he watched how arrows and spears deflected harmlessly against the draconic skin of the beasts as they managed to completely ignore the defenses of the weaker troops. Call the mages, shoot the riders down from the dragons, tanks protect the archers. Mazda shouted the orders as he got a better grip of the situation. Mazda proceeded to grab a spear for himself as he began running up to the nearest dragon who was the most destructive of the four, sending twice as many attacks as the other three dragons did combined. H-U-I-Y-Y, ugly lizard, come fight me if you can, Mazda shouted as he swung his spear violently in the air to catch the dragon's attention, however, what he did not expect was that although the dragon was facing sideways away from him, the rider who was facing him would unleash a terrifying dragon's breath himself as Mazda was taken by surprise by the attack and lost 15% off his net HP as a result. What the fuck? Since when do vampires breathe fire? Mazda wondered as he chased after Mira and Max who had moved on to attacking other areas of the fort after ignoring him. Currently, the fort was under complete chaos from the dragon attack as while Mazda had 16,000 troops stationed inside the fort, only 4,000 of them were capable of long-range combat and the previous 15 minutes of onslaught by the four dragons had already annihilated two. 5.3k of those 4,000 forces as the bastards targeted the long-range warriors first in a strategic tactic. Max's POV, Max was hanging tightly onto Myra's back as the two of them flew at blistering speeds through the skies and took laps at breathing fire down on the fort as Max tried not to get motion sick from all the fast turning and diving. To say that Mira was unstoppable in combat was an understatement as not only did she maneuver through the skies and dodge attacks perfectly, but she also tore through enemy lines at blistering speeds while spewing dragonfire. Mira alone did twice as much damage to the enemy fortress than the other three dragons combined as Max did his best to supplement her by protecting her from sideways attacks and guiding her to find enemy weak spots. It seemed like given enough time Mira would be able to tear the fort down alone, however, the tide of the battle shifted when two energy blasts whizzed past Max's ears as Max spotted four tier four warriors standing collectively in a diamond formation looking towards Mira. According to Max's intelligence report, the fort master of the southern fortress was a barbarian named Mazda and just like the northern fort master Maki he was a famed warrior but a sole powerhouse in the southern fortress. Max's intelligence report had no mentions of multiple tier 4 warriors being present within the place and he did not expect to see four of them gang up on Mira and himself. Be careful Mira. These guys can cause us serious damage, Max said as Mira created some distance between her flight path and the tier 4 warriors as she took a moment to regroup and consider the best strategy of attack. Twin Blade Cross Slash One of the tier 4 warriors on ground who was a dual sword user used the attack Twin Blade Cross Slash to create two giant sword slashes in the sky as they moved with considerable speed towards Max's direction. Max's first instinct was to block it with Flame Wall, However, he was in the sky and had no basis to create the flame wall which is why he was forced to use, Fire Blast, to try and neutralize the attack, but he failed in doing so, as the Fire Blast only slowed the incoming attack down but could not stop at point 11, 300.3, 400 Mira and Max both endured a bit of damage from the sword slash as Mira roared in agony mid-air and quickly flew up and away from the attacking range of the tier 4 warriors. Below. It was only when the group was above that Max got a better look at the situation and spotted a staggering total of 11 tier 4 warriors roaming the fort in what was a complete shock. 
Just like Mira the other dragons were not doing well either and were being forced to back off from the attacks of the tier 4 warriors below with Asaiva struggling the most of everyone. No, no, no damn it, they're not supposed to be so strong, Max cursed as he noticed that the enemy fort was not sufficiently ablaze at the moment for him to jump down and carry out his plan as he wanted to which was now borderline suicidal with the presence of 11 tier 4 warriors on the side of the enemy. We need to pull away, this operation is a bust, Max said as he felt his own heart pinch with pain as he said those words, knowing full well that the same strategy of there will never work twice and the enemy will be ready for an aerial attack and dragons if he ever tried the same shit twice. Pull away. Pull away. Max shouted despite his own personal pain as he relayed the orders to run. Life came first and although he wanted to create a miracle today by taking down a fortress's defenses by himself, it was not going to be possible with 11 tier 4 powerhouses present on ground zero. While Mira, Asaiva and Anna were able to pull away safely, Max watched in horror as an energy blast caught Sebastian on the back as he tried to pull away and knocked the dwarf off his mount, sending him falling onto the fort below. Sebastian Max shouted as without a second's hesitation he jumped after his buddy straight into enemy lands, not thinking about the consequences of his actions for doing so. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This bonus chapter is sponsored by patron shadow 118 please thank him in the comments for this one forward slash forward slash forward slash dot. Chapter 289 Insanity You are listening at novel full dot audio. Max just jumped behind the falling Sebastian without a moment's hesitation as by the time his brain could raise the question of, why are you doing this? Or, this is suicide, or the million other questions that would follow on how he was going to pull it off, it was already too late as Max had already jumped off Mira and was ready to die before he let anyone put a single scratch on his friend Sebastian. Everything became slow motion around Max, as he could clearly feel his two hearts beating straight out of his chest as he fell lower and lower towards the fort. Max's eyes never left Sebastian as he hoped that the dwarf would teleport the shit out of there before hitting the surface, however, it appeared as if Sebastian was either stunned or paralyzed as he was not twitching a single muscle in his descent. F-U-C-K cursed Max out loud as he used the spell, Summon Nether Beasts as he summoned fifteen nether beasts beneath where Sebastian was supposed to land to create a sort of cushion for his fall. Sebastian fell on one of Max's nether beasts back before awkwardly falling to the ground as he took a hell lot of fall damage and screamed in pain. His fall completely broke the back of the nether beast he landed on, but the other fourteen growled and formed a circle around Sebastian as they protected him from the approaching swarm of enemies. You are dead, dwarf. Ha ha ha, look what we found falling from the sky, a midget. Hey shoddy. Did they send you to change my kids' diapers? The enemy troops mocked Sebastian, however Max was having none of it as a scream came from the sky that said, touch him and I burn you to ashes. Max used Dragon's Breath to shoot a vertical beam of fire towards the fort grounds to break his fall as he landed a comfortable landing without taking much fall damage, standing head to shoulder against Sebastian's back surrounded by his hounds. It was at this moment that Mira and the other dragon riders did another lap over the fort, blasting the immediate opponents of Max and Sebastian as they gave the duo a small breathing room to fight. You okay buddy? Max asked Sebastian who seemed to have broken free from his paralysis and was back to full mobility as he said, I'm fine, I can activate the return spell the second you give the order. One nod from you and we are out, Max nodded, this was exactly the kind of assurance he wanted from his friend as it gave him the license to run wild. Mazda took a good look at Max, and he instantly recognized him from the mask and the red eyes as he knew that it was Raven, the infamous captain responsible for killing Maki and capturing the northern fort. Welcome, welcome, welcome Captain Raven to my humble fort, hope you and your dwarf friend enjoy our barbarian hospitality here, Mazda, the tier 4 warrior responsible for the security of the southern fort said in a sarcastic tone. Max looked at Mazda and the four tier 4 warriors around him and chuckled. It was quite the welcoming party for just two tier 3 enemies, however, Max was not intimidated by their appearance at all, if anything it gave him an adrenaline rush to want to see what they did next when he gave them a nightmarish challenge. 
I'm not so sure I like the brute architecture of your kind. I'm a man with finer taste in life. I want art and design. But I think my giant friends will enjoy this place, by which I mean enjoy tearing down this place, Max said as he began preparing for his next spell. Your giant friends. Mazda asked, sounding confused as to who Max was referring to when Max used the spell, giant summoning, and summoned three massive giants onto the fort grounds. Tear this place down. Max gave a simple order to his summoned giants with massive HP pools of 350,000 as they began tearing through the walls of the southern fort as they swung their clubs and ran through the weaker troops like they were puppies trying to stop a human from walking. The tier 4 warriors who had assembled to bring their focus on Max and Sebastian had to scatter to immediately take care of the giants as they spotted the danger of letting them run wild. Max also did not waste any time as he took the opportunity to attack Mazda bringing the fight to the chief of the fort. Max used his Ruik bone staff as a weapon for this fight instead of his sword as he understood the importance of his magic power being enhanced today instead of his prowess to physically harm his opponent. Mazda charged towards Max with his spear, but he did not expect the type of onslaught that Max was capable of bringing as Max unleashed a non-dot-stop barrage of fireball, spells aimed point-blank towards his head as Mazda was progressively pushed back one step at a time. Initially, Mazda was patient as he thought that Max would tire out after spamming the 50th fireball, however, he was left speechless when Max showed no signs of stopping even after the 500th fireball. What nonsense! Are your mana reserves endless? Mazda shouted, sounding irritated that he was not able to move a muscle against Max as he looked around and redirected a small bunch of his underlings to attack Max and break his barrage. Go, attack him, Mazda ordered his underlings who charged towards Max, however, they were blocked in their path towards Max by his nether beasts and Sebastian who formed a layer of protection between Max and his foes. Intense fighting broke out at the southern fort as despite 16,000 troops and 11 tier 4 warriors protecting the fort, the fight was completely skewed towards the attackers who were causing irreversible damage to the fort's infrastructure. Mira and the other dragons rained fire down on the fort, as after Max summoned the giants it gave them the much needed breathing room by diverting the attention of the tier 4 warriors attacking their skin as they were able to deal maximum damage onto the fort. With every rotation they took, they blasted at least 100 troops with dragon fire and damaged some section of the fort wall, as the southern fort was progressively being turned into the burning pit of fire that Max hoped it would be when he jumped to fight. Although, Max's jump inside enemy lines was not planned and was a result of Sebastian being knocked off his mount, it was turning out to be a blessing in disguise as the control of the battle turned out to be in Max's favor post his descent. One of the three giants that Max had summoned was able to punch a hole through three consecutive fort walls on the southern side, making a hole in the most critical section of the fort wall that was the integral basis of the fort's defense from enemy attacks. The second giant was successful in bringing down the only mage tower in the eastern section of the fort that was capable of enhancing a mage's power to deal AoE damage against a siege. The third giant was successful in killing about 800 troops before it died and before it died it was successful in propagating the fort's fire into the armory whereby he caused a massive explosion from the gunpowder stored inside catching fire. All in all, Max's three giants were able to cause mayhem inside the fort and had to be focused on by three tier 4 warriors each to be brought down, but they could not do so before the beings caused irreversible damage to fort property. With the death of the giants, Anna and Asaiva began retreating as Sebastian's dragon followed suit and started to pull away. Mira took two more sweeps onto the fort, risking her life against a flurry of tier 4 attacks, before Max gave her the look to pull away as he assured Mira that he got the safe retreat in the bag. Only after Max confirmed that he would be fine, did Mira retreat leaving Max alone with Sebastian on the fort grounds, just like Max initially planned it to be. Mazda understood that he had already lost the battle tonight as despite the enemies numbering only four, they had taken his southern fortress apart and at least two of them were going to fly away from the fight without consequences. However, 
his focus was now on the two warriors who were trapped within the fort grounds and to keep them from escaping, as if after all this he could not kill the chief perpetrators of the plan then it would be a tactical calamity on his part. Surround the men. Don't let these two escape, Mazda shouted as he assembled a large contingent of troops to surround Max and Sebastian. Max scanned the thousands of troops around him and saw how all ten tier four warriors had now assembled around him as he soaked in the feeling and gripped his runic staff hard. There was one part of his plan that he had hidden from Sebastian and his group, an insane trick that would possibly wipe all of his opponents around him today, however, it was a gamble where Max might die himself. Nonetheless Max had decided that he would only decide to go through with it in the last possible second, and now that he had to make that decision Max decided to go through with it. Sebastian, use the return stone and run, Max said as Sebastian looked horrified at the order. What do you mean? Both of us get out of here together. What nonsense are you speaking Max? Take my hand this is no time to joke, we leave now. Sebastian spoke in haste as he eyed Max like he was a madman. No not today my friend, trust me on this one, I'll see you on the other side, Max said as he actively jumped outside the encirclement of his nether beasts and launched an, inferno, spell on Mazda. You fucking idiot. Sebastian shouted as he felt reluctant to leave his buddy, but as the swarm of attacks singled in on his location, Sebastian being the coward that he was decided to use the return stone and teleport out. He had no idea as to what Max's plan was, but now he was all alone. Sebastian felt his hands trembling as he sat in the room in the northern fortresses as tears streamed down his cheeks even though he did not wish to. Dot Sebastian had an acute feeling of guilt for leaving Max back there alone as he felt like a true coward for leaving at the sight of danger when Max jumped in to have his back when he was in danger of dying. If you die, I'll never forgive you and myself, Sebastian said as he glanced in the direction of the southern fort, choosing to hope that Max knew what he was doing. Chapter 290 The Strongest Move You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Within Max's mirror world, two days ago, Ackman. I can't win if you amputate both my legs, now you are just playing nasty Grandpa Drax, Max said as he complained about how the mirror clone systematically attacked and chopped off both his legs leaving him limbless and without mobility in a fight. With 18% of his HP bar left, Max wondered how to fight with both his legs chopped off, however, he did not have much time to figure it out as only three seconds later he was on the receiving end of a devastating overhead slash. Overhead slash Point twenty two zero 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 critical hit. Max died from a strike to the head as he stood defenseless against the clone created by Drax. You will always die against me Max if you don't realize the flaws in your attack pattern. Granted you are improving and can fight me to a stalemate for a full 4 minutes before you die on average, however, your stamina reserves are enough to fight an opponent continuously for 7 hours straight at high intensity and at least 25 minutes if you are going all out. You are far, far away from facing your own limit as well, Drax said as he introduced the grim reality to Max that he was far from being the best version of himself. Ever since Max had his ass hooked in the mirror world, it became his obsession to improve against his clone as he spent every free second of every day inside the mirror world, fighting his clone as he tried to find an attack pattern that not even Drax could have seen through, however. Even after 1274 fights against himself his total cumulative damage against his mirror clone was at 789 HP points, as he had managed to land a grand total of 5 hits that did an average of 0 .150 damage. Max was far from catching the heels of his perfect self and the thing that infuriated him the most was knowing that at the end of the day it was his own body that he was being defeated against and not a stronger opponent. It was not like Max was facing an unbeatable strong opponent that was two tiers above him, because then it would be okay to lose so badly all the time, but losing to his own body at his own capability level was infuriating. Hence Max continued to grind against Drax's AI hard and every day his total time he survived in a match against himself increased as he was now up to 4 minutes of average combat against his own self from the pitiful 1 minute average that he started from. According to Drax this progress was still negligible compared to what Max was capable of and hence he still had a long way to go. Max, what do you think is your one strongest attack? 
Drax asked Max as he respawned in the corner Max thought about this question seriously for a while before saying, in terms of damage, if I think if I couple fire compression and use it with Inferno and then unleash the attack via my runic bone staff, I can unleash a fire spell at the high tier 4 strength level, it can one shot a tier 3 enemy, no matter how strong. Max had calculated the damage objectively and decided that although there were other attacks that could do more scattered damage to multiple opponents, in terms of one-on-one -on -one damage, this was probably his best attack. You're wrong, Drax said as he invalidated Max's line of thinking that Inferno was his best attack. Your strongest attack can wipe out even 500 tier 4 opponents at once, whereas the exact limit of its power is not something that even I can compute, Drax said as Max felt his mind going numb at his current strength level Max was happy to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one tier 4 opponent, but Drax claimed that he had a move capable of wiping out 500 of them at once. You have lost me, I don't think I have such a move, Max said as he gave up on thinking hard as to what this mystery attack could be and pleaded Drax to enlighten him. It is the move you have used to pass your tier 3 promotion test. The one where you tapped into the power of an ancient god and wreaked havoc all around you. While you might not remember it because your consciousness is still not strong enough to peek into Angakok's form and retain memory, I remember it as clear as a crystal the strength that move is capable of, Drax said as he revealed the true strongest move on Max's arsenal. That attack. B. But you know that it puts me in debt to the ancient god right. I have to pay back all the mana he expended for me and then some within a 10 day period of using the move. I admit the move might be strong but the debt is astronomical, last time I had to use about 100 million gold coins worth off mana potions to pay it off overnight, Max said as he clearly remembered the conditions of using that attack. That debt is laughable compared to the benefits it brings you. Trust me when I say this kid, that God is benevolent to make this move for his followers. If it were the fire god Agni, he would have put the debt at around 5 times the mana incurred by him or something like that. Dot the power of a god surely doesn't come for free, Drax admonished Max as he woke him up to reality. Present day, inside Southern Fortress, how did that dwarf escape? How the hell does he know spatial magic? Isn't that supposed to be forbidden high-level stuff? Mazda groaned in despair as he watched Sebastian disappear in front of his own eyes. You should be focused on me, Max said as he unleashed a strong inferno attack on Mazda forcing him to block as he took a bit of burn damage, I got to say you have balls, not running away with your dwarf friend and choosing to stay back. But your tale of bravery ends here Captain Raven, Mazda said as Max's skin crawled at the feeling of being surrounded by multiple high level opponents. He was completely surrounded by 11 tier 4 opponents with nobody but himself to rely on. Grandpa Drax, I guess it's time to use my strongest move, Max thought as he cracked his neck and put on a devilish grin underneath his mask. It was do or die time. 